Morning Show. I'm Nicole, and I am joined by my co-host and friend, Jasmine. We're so glad you're here. We also have two fun, friendly faces with us today, Kendra and Melissa. And you guys have a fun announcement for us, I heard. Mm -hmm. Melissa, will you take yes, it away? Yes, I will. I will. We're so happy. Thank you for having us yes. today. All right, you guys, we have a new online Bible study yes. okay. for the fall. Yeah, Start September 19th. That's right. And we are really excited about this one. And I don't just say that because we get excited easily about our online Bible studies, but this is one that I think, I think I really need. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need it. It is called Get Your Life Back. Everyday Practices for a World Gone Mad by John Eldridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just want to ask you guys some questions so okay. you can decide for yourself. Sometimes by a book title, you're like, we can get my life back. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> decide. Okay. On in, at the end of any given day, or even right now, do you feel overwhelmed? Yes. <laughs> my to-do list is long. Yes. <laughs> the time is short. <laughs> yeah. yes. And I like when I asked, they all like smiled and like kind of like had this little the laugh. laugh. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So do you just feel exhausted and maybe you don't even know why? Yeah. Yes. Like, like, sure. oh, just maybe depleted. Mm -hmm. Maybe not depleted. This. Why do I always say that? Deflated? Deflated. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, that should be a word. Yeah. I did that yesterday. Deflated. Deflated and defeated. It's just like, oh, yeah. right. Okay. Or what about this? You pick up your phone to maybe call your mom or, or do something. And you end up scrolling somewhere else that you weren't even intending to be on. Yes. Yeah, maybe amazing. you saw a notification or something, or maybe you're just like, oh. The like, rabbit trail that you can go down. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Is and 10 minutes later, you're like, what did I even pick my phone up for? What am I doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me? There's so much noise and news mm -hmm. and notifications, right? The three ends, everybody. Mm -hmm. It can feel like an endless cycle. And that is why we chose this book to yeah. do for our next online Bible study. That's right. Um, it's called Get Your Life Back, and it really helps for all of the things that we just talked about. It's a refreshingly simple guide mm -hmm. to help kind of recover your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And this book was written by John Eldridge. He talks about this in, in the introduction in 2019. Yeah. But not knowing what was coming in 2020 of just what we would go through as um, a society and as a world. And so he provides some simple practices all rooted in scripture yes. to help us get our right. life back. Right. Like going outside and yeah. noticing the beauty or pausing. Melissa, you have uh, the pause shirt have on. Yes. pause shirt today. <laughs> yes, really because he has a thing called a one minute pause. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not saying like people will take 30 minutes a day to right. just sit and think about scripture. That is nice when you can do that, yeah. right? But right. all these other things right. start going into your mind, your yeah. to-do list or whatever. And so he has this thing called a one minute pause. And literally it is one minute where you are just kind of reflecting on the beauty around mm -hmm. you or try to get quiet and just breathe before you go to work or before right. you, yeah. you know, go to bed at night yeah. or whatever. And that's just one of many. It's a lot of things to really help bring us back to God mm -hmm. and distance ourselves from some of that space. Mm -hmm. Chaos, yes. Not space, chaos. Yeah. Give us space. And give us space. We want to get close to the space, not this. <laughs> <laughs> and so this study starts September 19th. It's six weeks long. And so you guys are hearing about it first. We would love for you to join us. If it's something that you think you need, um, you can go to the link, proverbs31.org slash study to sign up. And we'll yeah. see you September 19th. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited. Thank you for, this is their first stop. Yeah. On a few stops today, you're going to be on Instagram. Little media oh, yes, tour. Instagram. So thank you for sharing that with our morning show audience. We're so excited. I have my book. I'm like ready. I've been feeling excited. defeated <laughs> in some places of my life. So I can't wait for this study. Thanks, thank you girl. guys for being oh, here. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Oh, okay, friends, we're so excited for that study. We have so many just really good things coming up. But Jasmine, it is August. Yes. Can you even believe that? I cannot this believe it. It's is flown by. Flying by. Yeah. And so I have like a fun game to kick us off. Yes. Um, what emoji would you use to describe how you feel about August? Okay, so I have two. I have 
little fall leaves emoji. Oh, you're you're ready. Yes, I am. So you want to move on? <laughs> it feels like fall is coming. It feels like fall is in the air. Target has fall stuff out. Like yeah. we're prepared. And then my second one would be the coffee cup because I'm ready for the pumpkin spice latte to be back. Oh my god, at Starbucks. That's my favorite <laughs> drink. Yes, but I do the pumpkin cream cold brew. Yes. Um. Yes. But let us know your emoji in the comments as well, because yes. we uh, see. Yeah, what about you? What's an emoji? Um, well, I would probably say the birthday hat, oh, because yes. my birthday is in August. Yes. It's like middle of August, yes. too, like almost exactly. So August 1st rolls around, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's, your it's like time for a birthday. Yeah, <laughs> birth month celebrate me all, all month. month actually no because I <laughs> I hate being celebrated <laughs> oh well that's so fun and we can't wait to look at the emojis that you guys have put in the comments yeah well Jasmine we're friends so I know what you did this summer <laughs> yes um but you did something really really cool mm -hmm. um and I'd love for you to share more about it but you went to Dallas yes and learned uh, basically how to share the gospel yeah. will you tell us a little bit about that yeah so like nicole said i went to dallas over the summer um just to learn more about evangelism learn more more about my faith and how to share that with other people and they told us that we would be taking part in some street evangelism so basically just picture walking up to random people praying for them asking them how to feel about god and sharing, you know, your faith with other people. And I was super intimidated by it. Yes. I was so nervous. I just had a bunch of questions like, what if they don't like me? What if it feels forced? Yeah. What if it just feels awkward and uncomfortable? So it's definitely something that I was scared of. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think we can all say that that is something that it can feel intimidating, mm -hmm. even if we love the Lord so, so much and it is truly our heart's desire to share the gospel with people. Yeah. Um, doing something like you know sharing it with a stranger or sharing it maybe with a family member or a friend who you kind of know where they stand and yeah. um it can be a very intimidating thing to walk into yeah and so we know that and so we just wanted to have a conversation today and give three simple ways that you could use to approach someone and talk about jesus yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So the first um, one you can use is some simple conversation starter questions um, so that this doesn't feel awkward. So some, some examples might be, do you consider yourself spiritual? What do you think about Christians? What is your concept of God? And what has been your experience with church? Um, and so, you know, before I started working here, I worked in retail mm -hmm. and I remember having a conversation with a coworker and these simple questions honestly just happened naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so hopefully these questions will kind of relieve some of that awkwardness and that pressure. And if they still sound intimidating, um, I think it's helpful to remember that the goal isn't to just convert someone right on the spot or make them believe in Jesus, make them become a Christian right in that moment, or even change their opinion about mm -hmm. God. Um, so the goal is simply to plant that seed yeah. and introduce them to Jesus. Yeah. Um, only he has the power to really transform hearts. Yeah, I love that. I really love those questions because um, they feel like you could answer them. There's no expectation behind it. Mm -hmm. It just feels like a really good conversation yeah. to step into with somebody. Um, so I really love that. Those mm -hmm. are really great ideas. Another idea is just simply bringing up what you've been learning in your personal life. I think. Um, in church or your small group or a book or a podcast that you've been reading. Mm -hmm. um, you can talk about what you are learning and dealing with um, as a conversation, the same way that you talk about it with someone who isn't a Christian or isn't yeah. a believer. Um, but it's a good way to just give a window for them into your beliefs and your faith. Yeah. And just a good way to have a conversation and make it this idea of talking about God and spirituality and faith just be a little less like intimidating because yeah. you're talking about yourself, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's so good, Nicole. Um, can I add something? Yes, to that? please do. You know how we're, so we obviously work with a lot of content and we see all the devotional posts, but something that's been fun ever since I started working here was I used to share some of our fillers or some of our, yes. you know, like 
Instagram sticky statements that are, you know, share it to your story. And people really like commented on them. I'm, yeah. And, like, replied to the Instagram story. On your like, personal page? Yeah. That's on my great. personal page. So people are seeing what you're posting on your social media, yeah. which is huge. It's super impactful. Or even podcasts or like yeah. sharing your favorite sermon notes on your story. People will really respond to those things yeah, too. Yeah, that's great. Um, but another great way is to weave the gospel through your own personal stories. So we want to share a few examples of what this might look like. Okay, so number one, um, what happened before you had a relationship with Jesus? So an example of this might be like, I grew up in the church and I knew a lot about God and I went to church every Sunday and I knew he wanted a relationship with me, but that was really it. So give me an example of, or a picture of what your life looked like before you had that deep relationship that you do now. Yeah. Another thing is maybe what struggle or circumstance made you realize you didn't have a relationship with Jesus, but you wanted one. Yeah. Um, maybe you started experiencing severe anxiety in college. You looked to everything but Jesus to solve those problems. And um, maybe some feelings of shame came from those choices. And it felt like these things that you wanted to put your hope into so badly just kept letting you down time after time. Um, but you realized you needed something bigger to save you. So you went, maybe you talked to a friend yeah. and they told you about Jesus. You knew they were a Christian and they helped you really understand how Jesus was our only hope and eternal life. So um, maybe that's something that you could share. Yeah. Uh, another way would be what has your life looked like since you put your faith and trust in Jesus? An example of this might look like since I put my faith in Jesus, I have felt more peace than ever before. I still have days when I feel anxious, but I'm reminded I can go to Jesus to find peace. Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed my circumstances, but it has changed my heart and perspective. Then you can ask what that person or the person that you're talking to, um, what they think about the gospel. Is this something that they believe or is this something they want to learn more about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's when you really break it down like that and you keep it personal and conversational, mm -hmm. it really takes the pressure off. Yeah. Um, sometimes maybe we feel like a failure, though, if um, we enter a conversation and it doesn't end well, yeah. um, but we just have to remember that our job isn't to convince people, it's just to share. Mm -hmm. um, but when we ask these questions, yeah. Jasmine, they're gonna respond. Yes. You know, we're asking <laughs> them questions, we want them to respond. Yeah. So maybe what are some responses we might run into? Yeah, so I think it's good to be prepared for those responses and also to remember not to take any of the responses personally. Mm -hmm. um, we share because we love God and because we love that person that we're talking to. So the first response might be that they are not receptive um, and that's okay. What should we do then? Well, we can pray for them. Again, it's not your responsibility to convince them to believe in Jesus, but prayer has the power to change things and you can continue to partner with the Holy Spirit by praying for that person. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, another response you might get is that they need time to think and consider it. Um, if we have this response, we can give them that time to yeah. think and consider it and um, make sure that we follow up with them and have a conversation in mind, some questions to maybe bring it further and um, give them that space, but decide when we want to follow back up and further that conversation. Yeah, that's so good. Um, or maybe they might have more questions and you don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, so we might get overwhelmed by this, but you can always just be honest and tell them you don't know. Um, but you have a mentor, maybe you have a pastor or a friend who would know and that you could ask them. Um, there's no shame in not having all the answers. Uh, seek out learning more on your own and with others who know more than you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think it gives the message that we aren't know-it-alls, mm -hmm. that we are still learning and wrestling with things about God and Christianity, mm -hmm. and you don't have to know everything, Yeah. Um, but we're just all in process. We're all learning more and more, so mm -hmm. I think that's really good. 
Um, but finally, maybe we get a response that we want. Maybe yeah. we get the response that they are interested in becoming a Christian. What do we do then? Well, you can lead them through a prayer and this prayer maybe will sound something like this. Jesus, I need you. In my sin, I cannot save myself. But thank you for dying on the cross for my sin so I could have a relationship with you. I ask you to be my savior and I also surrender my life to you and receive you as Lord. Thank you for the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. You can have all of me. Yes, and I know it's probably hard to remember all of this, um, so we want to share a link to a free guide that will walk you through all of this information, and you can download it through the link, um, and we'll put that in the comments below. Yes, friends, so we know this is intimidating, and it can be scary, but dare we ask the Lord for opportunities yeah. to share the gospel and share his love in small ways um, by creating conversations yeah. and asking meaningful questions. Well, Jazz, will you pray for us yes. as we kind of have this challenge and close out? Yeah, of course. All right. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you um, for the sacrificial work that you've done on the cross and in the transformation that has happened in, the heart, in our hearts. Um, help us to have the courage and the boldness to share what you've done in our lives and the lives of others with other people. Um, just give us that boldness and courage to step out in faith and to start these um, conversations, um, relieve any pressure that we've placed upon ourselves to have it all figured out and to have all the answers. Um, and we just thank you for the grace and the space to even make mistakes sometimes um, when we go about having these conversations. Um, we thank you that we have the opportunity to co-labor with you and to tell more people about who you are um, and why we love you and why you love us. Um, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we're so thankful that you joined us today, and we really hope that this was helpful. Remember to grab that link in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, we can't wait to see you for our next show. It's August 25th. We will be not on Facebook. Yes. We are moving over to Instagram. So find yes. us there. Everything else is the same. But we will be on Instagram for our next show on mm -hmm. August 25th with our special guest, Ruth Schwank. Yes. We love Ruth. We love Ruth. <laughs> um, and we're going to discuss the value of hidden faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So we hope to see you again then. Bye, friends. Bye.